The PlayStation 3 was not the preferred console of choice for the seventh generation, though you don't need me to tell you that. Despite the lower popularity, it did have some memorable games of its own. Little Big Planet, Ratchet and Clank Future, Resistance, Uncharted, but this took time for the catalog to have an eye-worthy potential. At launch, the PS3 had a couple of decent titles like Motorstorm and The First Resistance, yet many of its promised titles that were supposed to come out at launch were missing, being pushed back by another year or longer. Such titles included Killzone 2, Warhawk, and the star of this video, Lair. <laughs> Lair looked so cool. The original teaser showcased this incredible world filled with massive castles, dragons flying everywhere, insanely large-scale combat, both ground and air. It was really touting the power of the PS3, even bragging that the dragon would be controlled through the new 6-axis motion technology. Developed by Factor 5, the same guys behind the immensely popular Star Wars Rogue Squadron series, there were some high hopes. And then, it was panned universally. Well, this year, it'll be the 15th anniversary of Lair's launch, and either out of pure curiosity or spite, I wanted to see what all the hate was about and why it ended with Factor 5's closing. The story of Lair begins with Earth wanting to party like it's birthday by spawning tons of new volcanoes all over. This causes mass pollution and dividing the medieval world into two factions. The first is the Acilians, the Acilians who live in the part of the Earth where the volcano plague hasn't reached them, leading to their prosperity. Vital resources like food and clean air are plentiful. And then there is the Mokai. The Mokai is everyone else. They live near the uninhabitable conditions of the world where food is hard to come by. Their only method of survival is to invade the Acilians' land, and thus starts the conflict. Speaking of land, the land of this new earth is insane. You have these massive medieval kingdoms everywhere with grand bridges. This world also relies heavily on steam technology to provide power to its cities, resulting in massive spine-like wires powering city defenses like searchlights. Of course, the main star of the world is the dragons and various creatures. The Acilians and Mokai both rely on dragons for damn near everything. Ice, fire, and black dragons are used as fighters both in the air and on the ground. Then you have the mantas. The mantas are gigantic cuttlefish looking creatures that are mainly used as cargo transport. Though they can be outfitted to act like a B-52 bomber, dropping hundreds and hundreds of bombs. But there isn't just dragons. There are giant snakes, bugs, rhinos, bull things. There's a lot of character and thought put into this world. I just wish I could say the same for the rest of the game. Continuing to the graphics, for a 2007 game, this looks amazing. It does have the mid to late 2000s problem of brown filter equals real, but the sense of scale you have is incredible with all the mountains, oceans, and different changes in elevation. The battles themselves feel chaotic. There's fire, dragons, boats, and all sorts of hazards trying to blast your ass out of the sky. These battles feel grand, as they should be since it's one of the studio's hallmarks. It's quite the technical achievement to get so much happening on screen, yet I wish I could say it performed it well. We'll get to it. Despite the performance, the battles are entertaining. Your dragon shoots lock-on fireballs. If something is slightly highlighted, the fireballs lock on. You can land your dragon and take out your rage on massive battalions of soldiers. You can also get into other combat scenarios like yanking off riders and equipment, get into side-by-side -side situations where you have to swipe the controller left or right to bash an enemy dragon out of the sky, and the 1v1 situations where you claw, bite, and fire breath an enemy dragon. The latter two suffer from their potential enjoyment. The bashing is based on how good your 6-axis motion controls work, and since mine were on a 50-50 basis, these confrontations were not great. And the other kind of confrontation is pretty samey. The, the takedowns are cool though. That 
That's how we do it. Okay, so there's no avoiding it. We need to talk about the motion controls. So you have to understand that in the seventh console generation, there were two companies experimenting with motion controls. Nintendo with the Wii and the Wiimote, and Sony with its six-axis technology. Now you have to understand that playing with either of these forms were hot garbage for their own reasons, and developers were held at gunpoint with their families hanging over lava by Sony because they wanted to have this technology be the highlighted feature. Originally, Lair was supposed to be the staple game to demonstrate how good Six Axis could work. Sony was putting a lot into it, so much so that the first PS3 controllers lacked rumble motors. When Lair launched, most of the flight controls were done through motion control with no way to change it. And hey, it turned out to be a terrible idea. The dragon was uncontrollable, and it made the game unnecessarily hard. Eight months after the game's launch, an update added analog support, which is great and all, but the damage was already done. I mean, the game was already suffering with performance issues, and with it being single player only, this game suffered. It wasn't just the motion controls, it was also the story and characters. The voice acting is bad, and not in the enjoyable way. It's in the way most of them are just talking for talking's sake. I can't remember for the life of me most of these characters' names. All I remember is... Rome? Ron? What the fuck is his name again? Yeah, Ron. Keep it up. Oh yeah, Rone! It looks like it's spelled like Ron, but no, it's uh... It's Rone. His name is Rone. Neat. It's unfortunate because there is an interesting universe contained, yet has the flavor and lovability of novelty gum. The predictable and lame story of Roan realizing that the Asilians are essentially causing Mokai genocide because they're poor, and the baffling story moments that happen don't help the situation. I genuinely can't remember for the life of me what's actually happening in the story other than kill this, bomb that. And despite the entertainment you can get from these massive battles, the performance issues take center stage. Yeah, this game runs like 3 inch steel ass. If it runs at 30 FPS, count these moments as blessed as it'll easily drop to 20, 10, 5? It is funny to watch the game lurch to a near halt when a fireball destroys a boat. And it gets even worse as the game goes on. There are moments where the scale of these battles become even more chaotic. Mantas bombing, boats exploding, massive ground battles, dragons and fireballs coating the sky. It would be beautiful. Would be if it ran properly. This is where you see the duct tape peeling itself away. The motion controls, even when turned off, still have some sort of presence, such as ripping off turrets or rhino heads or getting into the side-by-side -side dragon battles, and they struggle. You have to shake the controller quite vigorously in order to get anything done, which is both tiring and annoying. The ground confrontations are kind of a joke. I think that the only ground enemy that damages you aside from the boats or war beasts is the archer groups, and for everyone else, they just kind of look at you? The spearmen just point their spears rather than jabbing at your dragon or roan, and all the other ground enemies just surround and stare at you with no intent. And the game just loves to be on your ass. All. The. Time. You're constantly being berated by characters to get shit done. Now, now, do it now, do it now! What do you want, to lose? You fucking idiot, help us now, now, now! So you're rushing around trying to do everything in your goddamn 5 FPS having ass to turn the tide of the battle in your favor. You're constantly landing because apparently strafing runs on a fucking dragon doesn't do enough damage. Flying halfway across the map to take out the one boat you missed in your earlier attacks. You're pushing yourself and your patience to help and have a good time. And you lose because whoop! You see, you see that one dingus dragon? You, you missed. You, you missed. He killed everyone. That dragon killed everyone. Fuck that. 
and there's a score system? What kind of self-deprecating, maniacally delusional jackass would play this for the high score? The unfortunate circumstances that despite the bullshit, the bugs, the FPS, the final result of the years of development, there is something here. It's a really interesting and epic concept. Grand battles in a medieval fantasy universe where dragons and all sorts of fantastical creatures are used as tools of survival and war. There are even some amazing locales like the cities or the Maelstrom prison. Even the music has some sort of personality to it. It is, and I mean this with all that I am, unexpectedly grand and glorious. The sound design with the music makes these battles feel so extremely epic. How this combination of sounds of war and music composed by the same guy who was involved with the score of the Spy Kids movies works is incredible. I'd be interested in a remaster of Lair. An updated FPS and some control changes would make this a much more tolerable experience. But then again, maybe not. Lair is a fractionally functional game, and it really doesn't have much in the way of replayability. Or playability for that matter. The game hard crashed on the final level, so that pretty much sums it up. I doubt Sony will ever want to greenlight a remaster of Lair, and I don't blame them. The game is stained with a rough development history and ultimately cost Factor 5 their legacy and name. There are already a good amount of games with massive scale and large numbers of baddies to take out. Even so, Lair deserves a little credit for having such an interesting idea with touches of personality. Not a lot, definitely not a lot, but a little. Ooh.